What's up everyone, it's Karthik at Money West and it is already November 7th here in Dubai. It is a little bit past midnight. Of course, uh, it is well past 1 in the morning as I'm recording this video. And markets just closed. We had one of the best days for the markets in a really, really long time. And Tesla also having a phenomenal day. Uh, it is my birthday today, so I'm wearing this hat. I had a call with my family. With my girlfriend, we had a fun time, and so I'm continuing with those celebrations with all of you guys with a huge, huge congratulations to everyone. Of course, I had to pick the green hat because the markets have just been insane today. I mean, we added over one point something trillion, $1.3 trillion in market cap added in the markets today. Two and a half percent on the S&P 500 hitting a new all-time high. And well over 5,929 points. We're just a little bit shy of 6,000 on the S&P. The Dow Jones adding over 1,500. And the NASDAQ here pushing up almost 3% on the day. Elon Musk tweeted, it is morning in America again. So again, congratulations to everybody. Markets, all three indices are at an all-time high. So if you take a look at our market snapshot, you'll see we've got the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. All three indices are hitting new all-time highs on the day. And of course, a lot of individual stocks. We got Amazon, new all-time high, $207. Congratulations, everyone. NVIDIA, new all-time high, $145. I rolled out my calls on NVIDIA as well. Netflix, new all-time high. Oracle, new all-time high. And Tesla is now well within 30% of their all-time highs with Google still in a pullback. Meta in a bit of a pullback, had a red day today. And of course, Apple here still in a pullback as well. So very, very strong day in the markets with my portfolio having one of its best days up almost $30,000. So can't complain, doing phenomenal. Again, hope you guys are also absolutely crushing it. So my heart goes out to everyone. Congratulations on this massive, massive day in the markets and hard work pays off. And it's all about having discipline, keeping your patience, keeping your consistency, trusting the process, planning, 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 capital preservation, risk management, all the good foundations that you've laid out on this channel are finally starting to pay off. And it's, it's kind of crazy because if you ask me four years ago, this was probably the entirety of my portfolio. Like literally I was a college student, you know, working my ass off 40 hours, you know, during doing internships when I'm not in session. And of course, during the school, I can only work up to 20 hours and literally every living hour was either in school, in classroom or working and was able to save up or whatever, get up to that number in the overall portfolio size. And when, now when you look at it, it's really all about the journey, all about the challenges, everything that you faced over the years. There's been a lot of hiccups. I remember 2022. I've remembered 2023. There's been many years that we've kind of spent together as a community. There's been challenges. There's been a lot of hard times, but we have pulled through every single time. And that's really what it comes down to. It's a survival mindset, being around for the long haul, capital preservation. And when the market is in your favor, you get to see and cherish and celebrate days like today. So huge congratulations because everyone who's been a part of this journey has really stuck through the difficult time. So pat yourself in the back. It's not easy. It's not easy when you're going through, uh, you know, some of the hardest times the markets are selling off and it almost feels like the sky is falling apart. And even then we come together as a community to have our therapy sessions uh, and, and of course help support each other, lift each other. And that is is what it's all about. So thank you so much for being a part of this. I really appreciate it. And I really want to take a moment to congratulate each and every one of you guys for the Dow popping over 14, 1500 points, S&P, NASDAQ, everything hitting a new all-time high. As, as of course, we just um, got the election results from yesterday after Trump clinching White House. Uh, I think there's going to be a sweep of the Republicans with the Senate and the House as well. So all in all, over 1.3 um, trillion dollars added in the S&P 500 with some of the major, major stocks, of course, uh, big three gaining almost 200 billion. We had max seven almost up half a trillion and top 10 over 538 billion dollars with Nvidia up over 138 billion. Just take a look at this difference because of Nvidia's larger market share, even a 4% gain on Nvidia is more than Tesla's almost 15% gain. 
That is the difference between the market caps of these companies. We've got Tesla here up over $130 billion. Of course, Nvidia up $138. We got Google up over $85 billion and Amazon up $81, $82 billion. Microsoft pushing up $65 billion and JP Morgan also having a phenomenal day up over 11.6. And financials overall were very strongly up over 6% on the day. I'll go over some of the reasons why that is and why some sectors are moving in some ways and the other. I'll go over that in just a minute. But before we do that, since it is my birthday today, I wanted to give you guys a huge discount 70% off across the board for all courses. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter which bundle. If you want to take a bundle, if you want to take individual courses, everything is going to be 70% off on the Teachable website. So this is lifetime access with unlimited access to all the tutorials. So you can pretty much access this. Coupon code is going to be BDAY28 since I'm turning 28 today. So BDAY28, all caps, and you will get up to 70% discount across the board for all individual courses, all bundles, everything. So link's going to be down below uh, if you want to, of course, take advantage of that. This does expire on Friday. That's going to be after my birthday. Now, the stocks that we're selling off, Eli Lilly down over $26 billion. We had Apple, Procter & Gamble, Home Depot, Philip Morris, Nexstar Energy, American Towers. A lot of these stocks selling off. And this was the sector breakdown with financials leading the charge here up over 6%. One word, yields. If you take a look at where yields are, they are pushing up a lot. They are up to as much as 4.429%. And as the yields continue to move up, I mean, you'll see a very nice correlation between the 10-year treasuries and how banks end up performing. And the reason is very simple. As the yields go up, cost of borrowing goes up, and that's a good thing for the banks because their net interest margin is also going to improve. So if you come over to XLF, for example, let's just go over to this chart. And let's take a look here. XLF has just been on this massive rally since October 23. It's up almost 60%. If you take a look at how the 10-year treasuries have been doing, and uh, that's really going to be coming in since October 23. If you take a look at this right here, August 24, it's up 23, 24%. And the 10-year 10 uh, 10 yields, of course, September, August 24, up over 23, 24% as well. Um, and then, of course, if you come back over since October of 2023, we're going to be somewhere around here. They're still down slightly from those levels. However, the fact that it moving moving back higher is a very strong positive catalyst, of course, for financials. Industrials, energy, discretionary. Discretionary includes your Teslas and Amazon, both pushing higher very well. Technology includes your Microsofts and your Googles. Of course, S&P 500, QQQs hitting new all-time highs. Calm services uh, also includes Google and Meta. Meta did underperform a little bit today. And materials and healthcare all pushing up with utilities, staples, real estate, and the bond market. So TLT continues to get destroyed on the back of higher yields. So financials are up because yields are pushing up closer to 4.5%. Technology is up because there's a lot of risk on, a lot of optimism, a lot of capital deployment in the markets because there's been a lot of capital sitting on the sidelines waiting for this election to be over and for that certainty to come in that who's going to be taking over the White House come January 2025. Energy is up because oil prices are back above $72 a barrel. Utilities are down, staples are down, and bonds are down. Utilities and staples more so because of the risk on rally. And maybe the soft landing scenario is back on the table. Of course, tomorrow, we've got the very important FOMC meeting. So if you come over to the calendar on our MoneyVest platform, uh, this right here, tomorrow, November 7th, is going to be the Federal Reserve interest rate decision at 2 p.m. Eastern. I will be live to cover that on my birthday. I'm going to be cutting the cake during that time as well. And of course, we got the Federal Reserve press conference at 2.30 p.m. Eastern as well. So those two events, very, very important. The statement release and the press conference, very important for tomorrow. Um, it's really going to be giving us a little bit more insight into what interest rates are going to look like moving forward. And of course, bond yields, since they are pushing higher bond market, bond prices are down because of that inverse correlation. So the money index is at 3.84. So it's actually a little bit less than what I'd expected from today, uh, primarily because of you know, volatility did come down a little bit over 20% on the day. So you'll notice that it was down over 20% trading down to 16. But I think the market breadth kind of held up a little bit well. I mean, we were only 45% of stocks here trading back above their moving averages. So I was expecting a lot more, a lot more of a broader base rally here. 
but despite this being a very strong green day, I mean, if you take a look at the heat map, it was very green, but it was mostly green in the uh, technology sector, right? Of course, consumer defensive, healthcare, real estate, utilities still struggled. And, and you know, I've already gone over what some of the reasons are for that uh, weakness in those parts of the market, but it was really a very technology, very consumer cyclical and comm services, industrials and financial driven momentum here in the markets. This is exactly why the Dow Jones was up more than the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq as well, right? So the Dow Jones was up a little bit over, you know, 3.5% versus the S&P and the Nasdaq. So it was very much of a financial and uh, energy driven momentum here. Of course, technology also participated quite a bit on the back of a Tesla and Palantir hitting a new all-time high as well. So Moneyverse Index is 3.84. We are very close to getting into the greed zone. As soon as it crosses over four, we're going to be in the greed area in this market. And that's exactly why we need to be very very careful. And one more thing, the reason why there is so much cautious uh, or caution that is suggested in my opinion is because of the rising yields itself. They loom over the stock market's risk on Trump rally. That is, in my opinion, the biggest risk that this market carries. Because if I go over to these two charts and what I'm doing here is that I'm going over to the weekly time frame for the 10-year treasuries at the bottom and then I've got the S&P 500 here at the top. And what you'll notice is that historically, they have moved in opposite directions. So if I come over to, let's say, October 2023, that's going to be right here. Let me just mark that out for you guys. So this right here is October 2023. You can see that that's a peak for the 10-year treasuries at well over 4.9, almost 5%. Well, that was the bottom for S&P 500 here. So that was October 2023. So those two are very much aligned. You've got October 23 here. You've got October 23 here. That is the top for the yields, a bottom for the market. Once again, if you come over to April 24, this right here is the top for S&P 500. This is a nice little drop in the S&P 500. So once again, you've got a top in the in the 10-year in the treasuries, a bottom in the market. Uh, this right here is August. So right before a little bit of that further sell-off, you got that nice little pop. This was, of course, because of the carry trade as well. And what you have here now is the 10-year treasuries are moving up as the markets are moving up. So we're starting to see a little bit of that di divergence as both of them are moving up in the same direction. Now, there's no rule of thumb that that can't happen. Uh, you know, of course, it, it is possible that it does. But at the same time, I mean, you'll, you'll take a look at December 23 and we were right about here on December 23. So, of course, we did move up both in the same direction. This was the markets moving up and this was the yields also moving up. Uh, but eventually we are prone to seeing these types of dips as the yields eventually become a bigger problem for the market because it's all about it's all about capital you know, deployment and opportunity cost. I mean, if the 10-year yields are sitting at well over 5%, 4.7 or 5% at some of these levels, it's a no-brainer for a lot of these pension funds, government, you know, uh, funds and of course institutional funds, hedge funds for them to deploy capital into the bond market and earn that higher interest rate risk-free as opposed to taking on additional risks to invest in equities, especially when they are trading at all-time highs and such high levels. So all I'm going to say is, of course, this rally has been very, very incredible. Congratulations to everyone, but we cannot take our eyes away from the risk factors and caution. And that's exactly why, you know, I, I could be like the the parent in the room, kind of like, you know, putting, uh, you know, a little bit of more of a disciplined party here. I know people want to go crazy on the on the back of this entire rally that we've seen, but I really want to suggest caution here because, um, you know, it, it really is when we become very, very blindsided, things happen that we get in trouble, right? So if the 10-year treasuries keep pushing higher, the markets are going to eventually come into a little bit of a halt. I think 6,000 is still possible before the end of this year, but I think we just have to apply some caution here considering how high the yields are getting up to. Now, some other statistics I really want to break down with regards to the election year. So you'll notice that S&P 500's performance during election years, monthly returns, percentage of times, how much they're up. So 83% and 90%. So these are the highest probabilities for the markets to be higher in the month of November and December during election years by an average of about one to one and a half percent respectively between November and December. This is going back as far as 1928. So the odds are very much in the favor of the bulls to close out the entire year fairly strong with a very high probability of positive returns by an average of one, one and a half percent respectively in November and December. And then if you take a look at some of the other statistics here, this right here has been 
the performance all the way through the end of the year and for the entire year as well. So this is the full year return for the S&P 500 once the S&P is up over 10% at the middle of the year. And that's exactly what we saw in 2024. The markets were up almost 15% in these six months ending in, of course, June and the rest of the year, almost every single time, 100% of the times the markets have been green. And that's exactly one of the reasons why I mentioned in my live streams as well, that we already understand the odds are pretty much 100% for the markets to close out this entire year positive, but it's really going to be what that rest of the year is going to look like. And so far, we've seen September rotate back up in green. October was slightly negative. November has been on a fantastic start. So we'll find out exactly what the next couple of months look like for the markets, but the odds are very much in the favor of the bulls. So in my opinion, every little dip, every type of pullback, every type of red day or correction is going to be a buying opportunity to close this year out strong. And I do believe, like I said, 6,000 is possible in this market to close out 2024. But there's still going to be some caution that is suggested considering how high the yields are coming up to. Like that's eventually, sooner or later, going to be a bit of a problem for the market. Now coming over to Bitcoin, also hitting a new all-time high. So congratulations to all crypto traders and investors putting up to over 75, almost $76,000. Volatility we discussed dropping over 20%, so a little bit over 16 right now with crude oil prices also trading back up to over 71, almost $72 per barrel at the moment. Um, and now coming over to the markets, there's not really not a lot for us to discuss, to be honest, because the markets are pretty much hitting a new all-time high. So even if I do bring up the technical analysis here, there's not really much for us to go over other than the fact that we've got a 6,000 target on the S&P. We got a nice breakout above this level, and that is going to be that next target for the S&P. That's going to be 6,000 points. Support level is going to stay put right about here, 58.78. And of course, we got a little bit of a gap that the S&P is also left out. It's not very common for us to see such a massive gap here on the S&P 500, but today was just little too crazy here. The Nasdaq Composite also leaving a big gap here, hitting new all-time highs. And we did get a little bit of a breakdown from this rising wedge. In the last couple of days, of course, nice little rotation back up. Didn't quite come down to very oversold levels or the support at 17.7. Instead, we rotated back up in a huge gap up with a breakout above 18.663 hitting new all-time highs, and we'll go ahead and turn this level back into a support now. Coming over to Apple here, and Apple on the day was also slightly down along with Meta Platforms. Those are the only two stocks in the Magnificent 7 that were red. And just imagine if Apple was green today, how crazy this market would have been. Easily could have been up over 3% on the day, but Apple here slightly down. Support level is going to stay put at 220 down to as low as $215. And of course, a resistance all the way up to $236 for Apple at the moment, Amazon, 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 my star next to Tesla and NVIDIA, of course, doing incredibly well. Congratulations to all Amazon traders and investors here up almost 4% with a huge breakout above $207. And we'll go ahead and turn this level into a support now sitting closer to 200 bucks for, uh, for Amazon. So very, very nice breakout here. Congratulations, everyone. There's not a lot for us to go over other than the fact that we can just sit back and enjoy some of these gains here. Microsoft also carrying us forward up over 2%, back up to 420. And support level is going to stay put inside this green rectangle, a strong area of demand and resistance all the way to $432, $433 for Microsoft. So that's going to be that target. A lot of consolidation. Microsoft's one of those companies that has underperformed quite a bit year to date. It is only up 10%, um, you know, significantly less than the S&P 500, but it's still got potential, of course. Resistance is going to be 432. Uh, coming over to Google, and Google also has performed really well after the earnings. It had a huge pop, gave back almost all of those gains, validated that support here, sitting roughly at 169, 170, and it's now starting to move back higher. We're going to go ahead and turn this level back into a support for Google and resistance all the way up to 192 for this stock here. Although there might be some intermediate resistance sitting roughly around this resistance at $183 for Google as well. So that's going to be that next target for this company. Now, coming over to Tesla and Tesla here, man, what a breakout for Tesla. Absolutely amazing. I mean, this is a level that we haven't seen in over one and a half years. Um, and of course, getting up to $288 a share, um, you know, just, just speechless. It's been an incredible move from Tesla and it is the volume wise more than twice as much volume compared to the 30 day average. And we've got a huge wall of supply for Tesla sitting inside where it's trading at the moment. So as you guys already know, 
you know, I mentioned in my previous videos that it's now more probable than ever before that Tesla breaks out above this $270 resistance and this wall. And right now, the next target is going to be 298 well, it's going to be 290 first because, you know, Tesla really did struggle at 290 all day. Because if you come over to this entire chart, you'll notice this was the uh, five minute chart on Tesla. And we just could not, could not break out above 290. I mean, we were talking about this during the live stream as well. And Tesla just was not able to break above this $290 resistance. That was like constantly getting rejected at these levels. Um, so that's going to be that level to watch short term and all the way up to as much as 300 pretty much that's a level that we haven't seen since uh september 22 so it's been well over two years uh, and of course all the way up to 310 dollars per share as well i mean tesla calls are just so juicy right now there's so much premium for those tesla calls uh coming over to nvidia and nvidia on the day of course hitting a new all-time high very very strong pushing up to 145. So I did roll out my calls on NVIDIA. Uh, so again, if you want to get access to all the trade alerts, the options portfolio, find out exactly what I'm trading every single week. Uh, link's going to be down below. You'll also get access to a lot of members only videos as well as our MoneyVest website, Discord access where you can engage with over a thousand traders and investors globally. So there's a lot of, lot of really cool features that you can join and of course get access for as well. So link's going to be down below. There's 16% annual discount, which pretty much gives you two free months. That's also available with the link down below. So NVIDIA here, new all-time high, very, very strong. Support level is going to stay at roughly at 145 now for this company. Talking a little bit about advanced micro devices, and AMD really did struggle. I mean, it was still up 2.4%, but it has been struggling a little bit. So of course, it is coming down to some oversold levels here. Very nice demand and support here in the 140s for advanced micro devices. Of course, RSI, MACD is also... Um, you know, selling off here. So pretty much oversold at this moment. And resistance is going to be all the way up to as much as 173 for advanced micro devices as well. Uh, now coming over to uh, Microsoft, we already went over Google, we went over. So coming over to Meta platforms and Meta here on the day also rolled over slightly, basically flat along with Apple, uh, which was also slightly down. But of course, we had some buyers stepping in. So lower highs and lower lows. Resistance is going to be all the way up to $602. Support level sitting roughly at 541. Netflix, new all-time high coming in for this stock. So very, very nice move to the upside, 780 bucks breaking out above this resistance. And that level is going to turn into a support now for this company as well. Now, coming over to Enphase, there's been a lot of questions on Enphase stock. And uh, Enphase, of course, selling off after the outcome of the elections. I think it's really a fundamental story. I've talked about this many times in my videos and my live streams as well, that they really need to... Uh, show us that there is going to be some acceleration in revenues and profitability uh, in 2025. So that is the real story there. It's coming down to a very strong support here in the $73, $74 range. So that would be the level to keep in mind. And resistance all the way up to $83 now for Enphase Energy. And last but not least, we got Costco in the house. And Costco here being a little bit more of a staple stock. Despite being a staple stock, it's pushing back up to almost 900 bucks. So it was up a little bit over 1%. However, a lot of consolidation sideways in that range for Costco as well. So that right there is going to be that level to keep in mind. Resistance all up to $919 for Costco. So hope you all enjoyed this video and a complete update on the markets here. We had a very, very crazy day. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and of course, being a part of our amazing community. I'm super proud of what we have accomplished over the years. As always, there's going to be a 70% discount on all the courses, coupon code BDAY28. Link's going to be down below if you want to take advantage of that. Lifetime access to everything. And of course, if you want to join our Discord community, get access to the MoneyVest website, as well as all the options, portfolio, trade alerts, members-only videos, link's going to be down below for that as well. Happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.